Trustee Lautner? Here. Trustee Zora? Here. Trustee Seidel? Here. Trustee Council? Here. Trustee Sheehan? Here. Trustee Stewart? Here. President Sipio? Here. A quorum is present, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Okay, moving on to the next item, public participation of agenda-related items only. If anyone would care to address the board, could you please say, I'd like to address the board? I'm not sure if that was somebody or not. Okay, I'm not yeah. hearing. Mr. President, we had received a public comment from a Richard May and that was distributed earlier. Okay. All right, we'll move on to consent agenda. Megan? Thank you, Mr. President. The items on this evening's consent agenda are as follows. A, approval of minutes. One, village board meeting, January 25th, 2022. Two, village board work session, February 8th, 2022. B, action, accounts payable and payroll summary, motion one, to authorize the president and chairperson of the finance committee to sign the register for bills and authorize the treasurer and village clerk to sign checks and payment of operating bills and salaries as itemized in the check registers and motion two to authorize the village treasurer and village clerk to sign checks in the payment of payroll and other bills that become due between this date and the next village board meeting with subsequent approval of the payroll register and voucher register by the board of trustees at its next meeting. Thank you, Megan. I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. A motion to have a second? Second. Okay. Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Here. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Okay, moving on to the next item is our village manager's report. Julia? Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I have just four brief uh, updates for this evening in my report. The first is that the uh, COVID uh, counts are looking much improved, very promising, and as such, uh, we plan to move to in-person meetings in March. So uh, all of our public meetings will be held in person in the village boardroom for March. So wanted to get that update out there. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, information regarding new equipment, new video broadcasting equipment. Uh, as the board may rec recall, last month we had some failure with our uh, Latronics Nexus um, broadcasting equipment. It has been installed and we have further programming later on this week. And so we should be all set to go in March with that new equipment, so that's great. And finally, uh, just a reminder for folks that on March 8th at 6 p.m. before our village board work session, we will hold our first finance committee meeting to review the preliminary draft budget. And with that, unless if there's any questions, uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Julie. Any trustees have any questions for our village manager? Okay, seeing that, we'll move on to administration committee, trustee council. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Upcoming community wellness programs um, is included in my report tonight. Over the next several months, the village of LaGrange Park and NAMI Metro Suburban will co-host a series of four free community programs <clears throat> focused on health and wellness. The first event titled, quote, Mental Health 101, end quote, will take place on Monday, February 28th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. The session will focus on, uh, one, learning warning signs and symptoms of mental health conditions, Two, discussing stigma and how these hinder under understanding, growth, and healing. Three, learning the differences between stress and anxiety. And four, discussing suicide warning signs and preventions. 
All are welcome to attend and participation is easy. Visit the village's website for the Zoom meeting link and to learn more about the event series. Registration via Eventbrite is encouraged, but not required. And the second item is the Community Arbor Day nominations. National Arbor Day is Friday, April 29th. The village is accepting nominations to plant a tree in honor or in memory of a person or group that has made a positive contribution to the community. <clears throat> Excuse me. Trees are planted. Yes. Yes. Trees are planted in a public space during a ceremony and a small plaque is installed at the base of the tree. Visit the village's website to download the nomination form and submit your nomination by April 16th. Contact Sandy Bakalich for more information. And this concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Trustee Council. Moving on, Building and Zoning Committee, Trustee Zora. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to report the building department activities for last month, January 2021. 32 building permits were issued in January compared to 42 in January 2020. Oh, I'm sorry, it should be January 2022. Um, 42 were issued in January 2021. Estimated construction costs for the month were $840,512, approximately 83% of what they were in January of last year. Permit fees collected were just over $15,000, down about 26% compared to last January. 95 inspections were conducted this past January compared to 125 in January 2021. Two inspections were not approved. Fire stopping and installation inspections were completed for increased transmission. Work slowed somewhat with the weather, but overall the progress was good. Rough and wall inspections began at 1201 Barnsdale. Is there feedback or something? <laughs> Uh, they are looking to complete some interior portions of the building and achieve partial occupancy in the coming weeks. Rough and wall inspections were completed for the expansion of complete rehabilitation at 444 Sherwood. Plan revisions for, were submitted for the Countryside Animal Hospital, which is located at 905 East 31st Street. Demo work for the space has been ongoing. Plans for a lower level remodel at Plymouth Place were approved. The scope includes a lower level dining space, salon, and several offices. These areas will be adjacent to the property, Center for Healthy Living. Code enforcement handled a heat complaint and a water leak issue, both at separate apartments in town. Code enforcement also responded to a complaint regarding a severe amount of ice and public walk from a sump discharge. Uh, and then I have two items that are up for discussion and action. The first one is for Andy's Frozen Custard Stores. They're the applicant. They're seeking a, to develop a frozen custard shop with a drive-through and a walk-up service window, an outdoor dining area, 531 North of Grange Road. The project includes construction of the new principal building, new parking areas, associated stormwater, landscaping, lighting, and signage improvements. The applicant is asking for the following nine zoning approvals. One, application for a subdivision. Two, application for a special use permit for a drive-through facility. Three application for a special use permit for outdoor dining. Four application for a variation to increase the height of the patio canopy. Five application for a variation to increase the height of the drive-through canopy. Six application for a variation for menu board signs. Seven application for a variation for directional signs. Eight application for a variation for wall signs. And nine application for a variation to increase the height of the exterior lighting. 512 LG LLC is the owner of the property, owns five continuous parcels that are zoned C2 commercial. This zoning lot includes Phillips Flowers and the site of the former Pancake House, commonly referred to as 515 and 531 North of Grange Road. The owner desires to sell a portion of the land to the applicant. They've entered into agreement for the sale and purchase of the property contingent upon a subdivision of the lot. Both property lots meet the bulk regulations for C2 commercial district and the minimum parking requirements for their respective uses. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the subdivision vote by 7 to 0 on December 16, 2021. The Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing on December 16, 2021 for the special use permits and variation applications regarding the height of the two accessory structures. The applicant attended the hearing and provided testimony. The minutes from the meeting, court reporter transcript, and approved finding and facts are attached in the board packet. Upon conclusion of the public hearing, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of a special use permit for a drive-through facility 
by a vote of six to one, approval of a special use permit for outdoor dining, seven to zero, approval of variation to increase the height of the canopy from 10 feet to 25 by a vote of seven to zero, and approval of the variation increase of the height of the drive-through canopy from 10 feet to 12 feet by a vote of six to one. The Planning and Zoning Commission held a separate public hearing on January 18th, 2022 for the variation applications regarding signage and height of exterior lighting. The applicant attended the hearing and provided testimony. The minutes from the meeting, court report transfer, transcript, and approved findings of fact are attached to this memorandum. Upon conclusion of the public hearing, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of all variation requests by vote seven to zero. Staff concurs with the recommendations of Planning and Zoning, and I would like to make the nine motions separately. The first motion is to approve an ordinance approving a flat of subdivision for 515 and 531 North Grange Road, Andy's Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second, discussion, Trustee Zora. Thank you. We did talk about all of these uh, at the meeting two weeks ago, but I will just briefly say that this cannot move forward without the subdivision of the property so that Andy's can purchase the property and build the uh, facility. And I approve. Any no comments to add? Seeing none, make you call the roll. Trustee Lawson. Yes. Trustee Zora. Yes. Trustee Seidel. Yes. Trustee Council. Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Megan. Continue on, Trustee Zora. The second motion to approve an ordinance granting a special use permit for a drive through facility at 531 North of Grange Road, Annie's Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion to have a second? Second. Motion to second. Discussion, Trustee Zora? So uh, I just wanted to say that we currently do have a drive through in town. It's further north at the dry cleaners. Uh, and again, this is <laughs> contingent upon the property. And some, whoever is not muted, can you please mute yourself? Because I keep hearing everything that you're saying. It might be a caller. Um, is having this facility as a drive through is contingent upon their operations. Um, and as I stated, there's already a facility in town that has a drive-through. Thank you, Trustee Zora. Any comments from any other trustee? Trustee Lautner? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, and as with all of these, we, we have talked through these and, and discussed each individual as well as the overall project relative to the site and specifically to the drive-through part. Not only is it not establishing precedents, nor is it setting precedents, for future drive-throughs. We made that point in our last meeting. So, you know, certainly I will support that, but I wanted to make that point. Thank you, Trustee Lautner. Any other comments from any other trustees? Seeing none, Megan, will you call the roll? Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Continue, Trustee Zora. Number three, a motion to approve an ordinance granting a special use permit for outdoor dining for 531 North Grange Road and East Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Discussion, Trustee Zora? We allow outdoor dining at several of the restaurants in town, and it's also part of the village's comp plan to allow this. So I think it goes in keeping with what LaGrange Park is, is looking to do with our business areas. Thank you, Trustee Zora. Any comments from any other trustees? Seeing none, make them call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Continue on, Trustee Zora? Four, motion to approve an ordinance granting a variation for accessory structure height for the pan patio canopy at 531 North of Grange Road, Andy's Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion to second. 
Second. Second. Motion second. Discussion, Trustee Zora. The height of the patio canopy is part of the brand of the facility and the canopy does not exceed the maximum building height in the C2 district, which is this is what it is in. And the architectural style of the canopy mimics the surrounding buildings that are postmodern as is this building. So I approve it. Thank you, Trustee Zora. Any trustees? Seeing none, making call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Continue on, Trustee Zora. Five, motion to approve an ordinance granting a variation for accessory structure height for the drive through canopy for 531 North of Grange Road and East Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion is second. Second. Discussion, Trustee Zora. The canopy shelters the menu board signs and the employees that are taking orders and also must be constructed for vehicle clearance. So I also approve of this. Thank you. Any comments from any other trustees? Seeing none, Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Continue on, Trustee Zora. Six, a motion to approve an ordinance granting a variation for menu board signs for 531 North of Grange Road, Annie's Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion is second. Second. Discussion, Trustee Zora. The menu board signs are required for Annie's to do business and expedite service. I approve this. Thank you, Trustee Zora. Any comments from any trustees? Seeing none, Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Continue on, Trustee Zora. Seven, a motion to approve an ordinance granting a variation for directional signs for 531 North of Grange Road, Annie's Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion and second. 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 Someone? Okay. Trustee Zora, discussion. Directional signs are required to keep the flow of traffic moving. I approve. Thank you. Any other comments from any trustees? Seeing none, maybe. I'm sorry. Was it Trustee Sheehan? Yes, sir. Um, yes. Speaking of the traffic, um, maybe for those listening or those online, um, to maybe Julia talk about what was sent out earlier today that all of this that we're talking about is contingent upon IDOT approval of the uh, traffic um, maybe touch base on that for those listening I appreciate that thank you sure let me make sure can you hear me yes okay good so we received a uh, public comment uh, via email in advance of the meeting, which was sent out to the members of the board. And uh, within the public comment, uh, there was um, a question as to an update regarding whether or not IDOT had uh, reviewed um, the plans for this particular uh location and for the particular site plan so uh with that i can provide I'll, I'll turn it over to maggie um to provide a little bit of an update and um in conjunction with that or in addition to that uh, we can also get uh just a couple of quick notes uh from the village's engineer mark volk uh on that comment so again, um, some of the concerns expressed in the public comment uh, was um, 
It was noted at the previous committee meetings that our village would be in contact with the Illinois Department of Transportation to address the LaGrange Road safety concerns presented by residents, including myself. Uh, prior to final approval of Andy's frozen custard business at this proposed location, uh, I am requesting an update from the village on how the village and IDOT plan to address uh, the serious lack of a designated turn lane on LaGrange Road into the proposed Andy's frozen custard store at this precarious LaGrange Road stretch of double curved highway. And so with that, uh, Maggie, maybe you can provide uh, a little bit of an update with regard to um, the update from IDOT, the Illinois Department of Transportation, and then we can turn it over to Mark so that there is greater understanding about IDOT's role here. Thank you, Julia. Um, we did receive an update from the applicant today. Um, IDOT was in receipt of the plans um, at, at the end of November before either of the public hearings. Um, the Andy's team has not yet received a formal letter of concurrence on the site plan um, or the traffic impact study, but their team has had discussions with IDOT staff um, and they stated that in those conversations, IDOT um, did not express any concerns about the traffic along LaGrange Road. Um, and so, I thought they did expect their turnaround time to be about six to eight weeks is my understanding um, in talking with one of their engineers. Um, and so they're taking a little bit longer. I imagine they've got quite a lot of projects in the queue. Um, so we're still waiting for that um, official letter of, of concurrence, but the communication sounds like has been there. I'll also add that when we reached out to IDOT, before the public hearings took place to confirm that they'd received the plans. Um, they did note that given that there aren't any ch proposed changes to the access to the site or modifications to that access, and given that it's not a major change in land use, um, they did not foresee any big issues with the project as it relates to safety or operations. Um, but of course, we'll, we won't be issuing any permits until uh, IDOT has officially um, kind of greenlit the project, um, as well as MWRD approvals. Thank Mark, you. you and um, yeah, let me just chime in a couple things. Um, as we know, Andy's uh, hired a um, Kimley Horn, a qualified, respected transportation consultant. They did a traffic study. They looked at the existing traffic. They projected the um, future traffic out to 2027. Uh, they modeled the type of business that's there, Andy's uh, drive-through. Um, I think they were um, uh, even more conservative. It was more of like a McDonald's type of a uh, business. Um, their analysis indicated that left turns um, would still be at a level of service of B and that there uh, would not be a warrant for a dedicated left turn lane or a right turn lane um, based on um, you know, projected left turns and right turns into the business. And that's based on the uh, IDOT Bureau of Design and Environment Manual as well as the Institute of Traffic uh, Engineers um, traffic project projections. So um, as Maggie said, you know, we'll wait to hear from IDOT, but um, since the, uh, the driveway configuration is the same and um, commercial business, it's still a commercial business, the same as the pancake house, um, it, everything looks like it would, you know, function as it as it is right now acceptably thank you mark julia maggie anything else to add any other trustee have any comments uh, thank you mr president excellent response so thank you thank you trustees megan call the roll please trustee lautner yes trustee zora yes trustee seidel yes Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Continue on, Trustee Zara. 
Sure. Eight, motion to approve an ordinance granting a variation for well signs for 531 North of Grange Road, Annie's Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion to second. Discussion, Trustee Zora? Uh, well signs are necessary to the business and I approve them. Any additional comments from any trustees? Seeing that, can we call the roll? Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. And last one, Trustee Zora. <laughs> Nine, motion to approve an ordinance granting a variation for exterior lighting height for the patio canopy for 531 North of Grange Road, Andy's Frozen Custard Stores, LLC. Motion to second. Second. Trustee Zora, discussion? Sure. The lighting will be required to meet the village code and photo metrics will have to be submitted by the applicant during the permit process. I did want to say before I finished the last motion that the topics of concern when I attended the two planning and zoning meetings were traffic safety and lighting. And as I said, lighting would be enforced by the village and the applicant would have to submit for permit. Um, and as Mark Folk just stated, traffic was done with a study with Kimberly Horn by the applicants and safety will be reviewed by the, the CRC study with the village market improvement plan. Uh, when the consultant is selected, that will also be reviewed. Uh, but I approve the lighting request. Thank you, Trustee Zora. Any comments from any trustee? Trustee Laudner? Thank you, Mr. President. And I also wanted to add that there were significant uh, considerations and concessions made by Andy's, and this as well as others. So. Uh, I think there was a real spirit of working together with us as, as a village and uh, really looking forward to, to their entree into our village. But and thanks for all the hard work of our committee and the people involved in, in bringing this together. It was a lot of work and a long time coming. And that's one express appreciation for that and looking forward to it. Thank you, Trustee Lautner. Any other comments? Seeing none, Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Great, thank you, Megan. Uh, continue, Trustee Zora? Yes, thank you. Uh, Plymouth Place Incorporated is the applicant of a non-for-profit non Retirement community located at 315 North of Grange Road. The property is approximately 19 acres, includes multiple buildings. The primary facility is an eight story structure, which was built in 2005, houses 182 independent living apartments, 52 assisted living units, 26 memory support units, and 86 beds and skilled nursing. 54 single story cottage homes were built in the 1950s east of the primary facility and towards the rear of the property. The main building was constructed after the village approved a PUD, a planned unit development in 2005. The village approved the PUD amendment in 2017 to demolish a segment of the cottages and facilitate construction of a new employee parking lot. The applicant intends to demolish the remaining cottages and replace them with a series of villa buildings, providing 94 new independent living units and associated parking, circulation, landscaping, lighting, and stormwater management improvements. The new residential buildings will be positioned around two enclosed at-grade parking garages with landscape plaza decks on the second floors. The ground will include gardens, recreational areas, and a walking path around an expanded detention pond. Due to the scale and complexity of the proposed project, the bill determined that the proposed changes to the PUD constitute a new application. The applicant submitted a PUD application and a public hearing was held before the Planning and Zoning Commission on January 18th. The applicant attended the hearing and provided testimony. The minutes from the meeting, court reporter transcript, and approved finding of facts are attached in the board packet. Upon conclusion of the public hearing, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the PUD preliminary plan and special use by a vote of seven to zero. Staff concurs with the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commissions. And I would like to make a motion to approve an ordinance granting approval of the PUD preliminary plan and special use for 315 North of Grange Road, Plymouth Place Incorporated. 
We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Trustee Zora. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say to the applicants, as I stated last meeting, the plans look great. I think it's a great addition to Plymouth Place and to LaGrange Park. Um, and I did drive by the site now. There were some discussions in stormwater management, and um, our village engineer had stated that they've reviewed the plans. Um, the stormwater on the site is determined by what is on the site and can only assist with the property and not adjacent properties. So I, I approve this, and I feel like Pl uh, Plymouth Place has done everything they can, and it's going to be a really nice addition to our village. Thank you, Trustee Zora. Trustee Council? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I'm definitely happy that the village engineers are in concurrence with this, and I, I'm grateful for their support over the, the course of this project. Um, and I know that Plymouth Place will continue to be a good neighbor, and I'm looking forward to seeing this project start and finish. So um, I'm in full support of it, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Seidel? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm looking forward to it as well. The plans are great and I'm thankful for everyone involved and I'm in full support of this. Thank you, Trustee Seidel. Trustee Sheehan? Mr. President, my uh, previous concerns about the stormwater and the density have been addressed. I'm in favor of this. It's an exciting project. I look forward to seeing it to uh, complete itself. Thank you, Trustee Sheehan. Trustee Stewart? Thank you, Mr. President. I echo the sentiments of my fellow trustees, and I am also looking forward to this project, and I, I approve as well. Thank you, Trustee Stewart. Trustee Lautner? Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing to add to the comments of my fellow trustees uh, other than my support. Thank you, Trustee Lautner. I would just like to thank uh, our staff and uh, both our chiefs and Maggie and Julie and everyone for all the work that you're doing. <laughs> Also, I'd like to give a kudos to Jay Biden and his team. What a tremendous project and what a great um, situation for our community to be in to have such a quality uh, business such as uh, Plymouth Place and what you guys are doing back there is only going to improve the looks of our community. So thank you, Mr. Byer. Yes. Thank um, you all the <clears throat> yeah, Mr. President, this is Jay Beery. Thank you. We uh, just want to appreciate your support and so gracious for uh, partnering with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan, and, and kudos, Jay, again, and looking forward to the development. Uh, Trustee Zora, thank you for all the work that you've done and you're making it through this. So we'll move <laughs> thank on you. To Engineering Capital Projects Committee, Trustee Stewart. Thank you, Mr. President. I have three items on a report this evening. First being design work was started for the 2022 village-wide uh, crack ceiling project. The project involves routing, cleaning, and filling transverse and longitudinal cracks in asphalt pavements using rubberized crack ceiling material. Pavement cracks are sealed on selected streets located throughout the village. Proactive filling of pavement cracks helps to extend the serviceable life of the street. Second item, design work has started on the 21-22 sewer cleaning and television program. This is a yearly maintenance program in the village. After completion, the contractor will provide videos and data logs of all of the sewers inspected. This information will be reviewed to determine if any sections of the sewers need repair, point repairs, or, in good, or are good candidates for sewer lining. Third and final item, preparation for the specifications for the 21-22 sewer repair program continued. The project involves point repairs on sewers located throughout the village that are identified by a recent tele Tele televising and cleaning projects. The sewer sections identified for repair represent segments of sewers that need replacement. And that concludes my report this evening. Thank you, Trustee Stewart. Okay, moving on, Public Safety Committee. Trustee Seidel. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll begin with the Police Department's summary of 
January 2022, the total number of crimes for the first month of 2022 are significantly lower than last year with 29 incidents reported this year compared to 83 in 2021. The reporting of fraudulent unemployment claims related to the pandemic have drastically decreased, causing this significant drop. Traffic enforcement is at 273 total tickets issued through January of 2022. Overall police activity is 45% higher to last year with 1108 total incidents reported through January of 2022. Compared to 698 total incidents through January 2021, of those 1108 total incidents, 102 were Assist to the fire department, 408 were self-initiative buildings or park checks, 75 were traffic stops, and 63 were closed home checks. Department members attended 120 hours of training along with the completion of required monthly online training and LexiPoll daily training bulletin. The police department took the possession of a 2021 Ford interpreter utility and completed the necessary emergency equipment upfitting. Vehicle is now out on patrol and marked as Unit 225. Two package terminal air conditioners, PTAC units, were replaced within the police department. The old units were approximately 20 years old, inefficient, and replacement parts were becoming obsolete. New units have digital thermometers and room sensors to assist with keeping a consistent room temperature. Mark your calendar for do not miss out on upcoming police department special events, pandemic pending, Citizens Police Academy, Saturday, Saturdays, April 2nd to May 7th from 9 to 11 a.m. in the Village Boardroom. Please contact Officer Chris Dempsey at 708-352-7711, extension 275, for further information or see Dempsey at lagrangepark.org. You may pick up applications at the Police Department window during normal business hours. Coffee with the Chief and Staff, Tuesday, March 15th from 9 a.m. to 10.30 at Panera Bread, located at 439 North LaGrange Road. Please follow the Police Department on the Facebook page at LaGrange Park Police Department, our Twitter account at LaGrange Park PD, and Instagram at LaGrange Park PD. A friendly reminder about securing one's personal property at all times, please lock your vehicles and residents. Especially during overnight hours, if you are going on vacation, please utilize the new online vacation watch portal, frontlinepss.com slash LaGrange Park, or log into the Village website and access the portal under the Police Department page. If you do not have internet access, please feel free to fill out, fill out a vacation watch card at PD between the hours of 9 and 4.30 p.m. That concludes the police department report. Next, the fire department activity for month of January 2022. EMS incidents this month, 166. This compares to 135 in the first month of 2021. Fire rescue incidents this month is 56, compares to 33 in the first month of 2021. Both stations were staffed overnight on January 1st due to winter storm warning. Our training schedule was modified and department-wide training went back to the virtual due to the high COVID infection rates and the high number of COVID patients being hospitalized at local hospitals. Personnel also reviewed an emergency stand-down training program from the International Fire Chiefs Association as they had called the emergency stand-down in early January to focus on COVID prevention efforts due to the high number of firefighters who were dying from COVID. Our six new POC candidates and our newest PSI medic became the Basic Firefighter Operations Academy, which takes place on Tuesday and Thursday evenings and on Saturday. Hydrostatic pressure testing and a final inspection of the fire sprinkler system took place on Hop District Community Brewing. Final sprinkler testing also took place at the home of 302 North Catherine. Fire Chief Completed and submitted an assistance to firefighter grant program application for all new self-contained breathing apparatus and new mobile dual band Starcom 21 radios. Two of our firefighters attended training at the Winter Fire College event, which took place at the Illinois Fire Service Institute, located at the campus of University of Illinois in Champaign. Engine 1211 returned back to service after being out of service for approximately two and a half weeks for pump repairs. I have one item for action and discussion this evening 
regarding ambulance billing agreements. General background, Andrea's medical billing has provided contractual ambulance billing services to the Village of LaGrange Park since October of 2000. We've been very satisfied with our overall services, including responsiveness, keeping us informed of changes in the industry, and assisting us with various research and projects related to fees and billing. Since that time, the agreement has been modified slightly a couple of times in regards to the rate for pay of service and for the most part has been an annual agreement with automatic renewal. Based upon the recent changes to our ambulance fee structure and the interaction with Andres, staff felt it was best to work with Andres on a new agreement, including a reduction in our rate for service. Andres was agreeable and has offered us a new agreement with a reduction in our rate from 6.5% to 4.75%. This percentage is applied monthly to the actual amount collected on billing each month, and that is what we are billed by Andres for service. We again also included an annual renewal cause, but requested a contract end date of April 30th, 2025. Staff requested an end date to force us to take a look at the contract at that point in order to evaluate our service rate, our recovery rate, and how we compare to others at that point. We felt it was especially important with recent changes to our fee structure and other programs affecting EMS building and reimbursement taking place, such as GEMT. Recommendations, staff recommends entering into another contract for this service with Andres Medical Billing. Action requested, discussion and action. Ambulance billing agreement, at this time I make a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the village manager to execute an agreement with Andres Medical Billing, LDT, for our ambulance billing services. A motion, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Lautner. Discussion? Trustee, um, yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this makes sense. I'm glad staff took a look at this, um, and I am in full support of this motion. Thank you, Trustee Seidel. Any trustees have any other comments they'd like to make? Trustee Lautner? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it does appear to be some pretty significant improvements, and if I'm reading this correctly, I just want to make sure I'm understanding appropriate that it's, it's a, about a 30% reduction in our cost. Am I reading that right, going from 6.5 to 4.75? That's, that's the first question I have, ensuring that this is a cost reduction to us and the, and the positive impact. And I'd be interested in knowing approximate how much dollars. I mean, there was a lot of work that went into determining costs and increases in, in uh, salary rates and things of that nature. So I want to make sure that I under, understand the significance of this, first of all. Larry, would you care to answer or Julia, either one? Or Chief? Yeah, I think all I think all three of us were in on the conversation. So I'll why don't we start with Larry? And I don't know if we have the um estimated cost savings due to the reduction in the percent um uh as attributable to the um service that they provide to us. But why don't we start with Larry? So you are correct. Uh, Trustee Lautner, that it'd be about a 27% reduction in uh, fees if everything stayed as it is now uh, with the 6.5%. So um, obviously with the rate increase, they anticipate right. collecting a little more uh, than they would have under the old rate structure, how that plays out in terms of how much more we will collect is still uh, We'll have to wait and see data over the next year or so to, to, to see how that goes. But uh, ultimately, it is a, a very, very significant rate decrease in the amount that they're going to be billing us. Well, and hopefully that will get us a, a, a lot closer to breaking even. I mean, those are some pretty significant increases that we approved and we're looking at. So hopefully this will get us a, a lot closer to parity, if, if you will. Um, and, and breaking even on that. The other clarification I, I, I wanted to make is, uh, and then residential billing is still at our, our responsibility and discretion beyond the insurance collections. Yes. Um, 
you know, we we looked at the different we looked even further after we approved the, the changes as to how we would implement that. And there were a lot of there was a lot of back and forth with Andres on how they handle that as far as not billing residents and, and how do you collect, you know, there, there's actually we didn't want to get into it too deep and confuse the situation, but there's a lot of differences, or not a lot, but there's differences in how the healthcare considers balance billing, balance billing, they is billing for deductibles and co-pays um right you know we promised the village board we were not going to balance bill residents and see how that goes and i think that's why we had a little bit of follow-up with you once we had those discussions or, or some information was put out we are going to see how it goes even though it's gonna it's gonna end up in a little less revenue than we anticipated in our our fee discussion we did make that you know we expressed we would not balance bill and and it, it's kind of hard for Andres to manage getting the deductible, but not balance billing the whole thing. So, so we're gonna see how it comes in. Everybody will still be asked for their insurance and we have to treat everybody the same, whether they have insurance or not. And that, that's another right. one of the reasons it gets confusing. And beyond that, if residents do not provide us any additional beyond their, you know, it, when we request it, um, we will not balance bill and we will not bill residents. Again, I, I think we provided some information that said we're going to have to see how that goes because there may be, you know, there there may be concerns that even though they get a request for insurance, if they don't submit their deductible to us, technically in the healthcare field, that's that's not considered balance billing, but it's it becomes a very difficult managing or situation to manage to go after just that and then stop it. It's so we are not going, yes. So <laughs> back to your original point, at this point, it's our discretion, but as we had That's, expressed the village board, for now, we will not balance. That was just a clarification that at our discretion and responsibility. Yes. Excellent. Yep, wanted to make those two clarifications. Uh, with that, uh, it, once again, thanks for all the hard work on this. There's a, a lot to it that's not lost on us. And I would support. Thank you, Trustee Lodner. Any other trustee have any other comments they'd like to add? Seeing none, yes, Trustee Lodner. I did have one more thing. I was glad to see that there was a uh, an expiration to the contract that uh, will drive us to make sure that we re-review the relationship and the cost and, and, and the arrangement going forward. So I appreciate that effort. Thank you, Trustee Lodner. Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. And thank you, Trustee Seidel. Okay, moving on, Public Works Committee, Trustee Sheehan? Thank you, Mr. President. The following is a monthly report for January. DPW repaired seven water main breaks this month, along with complete lead service line replacement from main to meter. January brought multiple snow and ice events for staff to face. Staff worked quickly and efficiently through each storm, adapting to changing conditions. Nearly 230 tons of salt were used in January, applied at an average rate of 200. 14 pounds per lane mile. A cumulative total of road salt miles, road miles salted this month came in, came to 2,148 miles. Anti-ice applications were executed only once this month due to unfavorable weather conditions. 1,250 gallons of product were applied. Asphalt work was conducted to repair potholes and patch areas from excavation. Asphalt work will continue throughout the year. The new Caterpillar M30 front end loader arrived this month. Staff completed training session with CAT representatives and have put the new machine into full service. This machine replaces a 1999 John Deere 544. GIS work has continued collecting data on village-owned assets along with continued training throughout the village. 
Water meters were read in section one. 15 monthly bacterial samples were taken along with quarterly stage two samples. Various water and sewer work orders were completed along with resident tree concerns and general construction inquiries. Routine maintenance to department fleet and equipment was performed as well as police and fire vehicles. And I have action items here. All right, next we have Bethlehem Woods Water Meter Purchase Authorization. The purpose is this memo seeks the Village Board's approval to purchase and install two fire and domestic water meters for Bethlehem Woods Complex. Two connections serve Bethlehem Woods to the Village's distribution system. Each connection includes a fire meter and a domestic usage packet meter use package. Choosing a meter for these locations is difficult because they need to be Underwriters Laboratory and FM Global uh, certified to meet fire protection standards. The current meters are over 30 years old and parts are no longer available to rebuild them. In 2019, staff recommended replacing a meter at Plymouth Place with the exact setup with a Badger metering fire line package. Our current manufacturer of census metering doesn't offer a direct replacement that meets our requirements. Badger metering has a line of water meters that are direct replacements for the application. It has a high flow fire protection and a low flow domestic meter. The recommended meter is UL and FM certified and will work with our current reading system. Uh, one exception is package that doesn't meet our current need is the low flow or domestic meter. Badger's meters can only register as a low 2.5 gallons per minute. Staff would recommend installing a two inch census Omni C, our current meter for this application, which can capture usage as low as a quarter of a gallon per minute. Uh, public Works staff will install the meters assemblies. Mid Midwest Meter and Core in Maine are the only two providers of Badger meters in Northwest Illinois. Corn Maine is the sole provider of census meters in our region. Uh, you see the numbers, Corn Maine, $23,400 per fire meter times two, total of $46,800. Midwest Meter, $22,950 per fire meter times two, $45,900. Corn Maine, $1,329 dollars for a census omni c times two twenty six hundred fifty eight dollars appropriate funds were budgeted in this fiscal year to purchase these meters water distribution five hundred seventy eight six seven five zero fifty thousand dollars staff recommends the village board approve the purchase of the two badger 10 inch fire series assembly from midwest meter for the cost of forty five thousand nine hundred dollars and two census omni C meters from Core and Maine for $2,658 at tonight's meeting. Therefore, I'll make two separate uh, motions, Mr. President. First one be a motion to accept the price for Midwest meter for $45,000 to purchase two fire assembly meters for Bethlehem Woods and to authorize the village manager to execute the necessary documents. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and second discussion, Trustee Sheehan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. As previously stated, the meters are old, the gear and the mechanisms wear down. Um, yeah, I think we could get a, a better accurate um, probably measurement and uh, they fit the needs. I don't know if Director Raddy has anything else to add, but I would support this. Thank you, Trustee Sheehan. Director Raddy. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is the same meter that we replaced over at Plymouth Place a few years ago. Um, it, it's it's unfortunate that the Badger meter doesn't have the low flow capacities that we're looking for than the the, um, the Census Omnis, but those are a direct replacement. Um, and again, we saw instant uh, um, instant results when we replaced that meter at Plymouth Place with the accuracies and especially with the all the low flow requirements for toilets and shower heads, things like that. It's 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 a necessity to have a meter that can actually get down to those quarter of a gallons per minute, especially at such a large complex like that. So um 
should be a should be be a little bit difficult of an install, but I uh, the guys will be up for the challenge, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get these to last another thirty years. Thank you, Director Eddy. Any other comments from any trustees that they would like to add? Seeing none, Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner. Yes. Trustee Zora. Yes. Trustee Seidel. Yes. Trustee Council. Yes. Trustee Sheehan. Yes. Trustee Stewart. Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Continue, Trustee right. Sheehan. Thank you, Mr. President. The last, I have motion to accept the price from Cord, Maine for two census omni meter C omni C meters for Bethlehem Woods and to authorize the village manager to execute the necessary documents. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Discussion, Trustee Sheehan? I would support, sir, no further, uh, nothing else. Thank you, Trustee Sheehan. Any other comments from any trustees they'd like to add? Seeing none, Megan, call the roll. Trustee Launder? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. And thank you, Trustee Sheehan. Okay, you, moving sir. on. Finance Committee, Trustee Laudner. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tonight's uh, financial report uh, reports on the financial performance through January of 2022, which is nine months into the fiscal year. Fiscal year to date, general fund revenue is at 73% of the annual budget and about 315,600 or 5% greater than the prior year. Property tax receipts are up about 159,400 or 9.4% compared to the prior year. A portion of these receipts would normally have been received in the prior fiscal year. However, the first installment bills were postponed this year, you may recall, by the county. Other local taxes are down by about 18,600 or 2.2% due to the continued decline in the telecommunications tax and the timing of cable franchise fee payments. Intergovernmental receipts are higher by about 103,000 or 4.2% compared to last year. Income tax is 24.4% higher than last year, while sales tax is up by 32.5%, and use tax is 13.9% lower. The leveling the playing field for Illinois Retail Act required out of state retailers and marketplace facilitators to collect and remit state and locally imposed sales taxes for the location where the product is delivered starting last January, 2021. Combined sales and use tax is up by 11.2% compared to the last fiscal year. License revenue is lower by about 6,800 or 2.3%. Permit receipts are up 37.2% or about 94,400 compared to the prior year. Charges for services are higher by about 24,700 or 3.8%, and that's mainly due to increased ambulance fee receipts. Fines are down about 28,400 or 21.2%. Total general fund expenditures, excluding the transfer to the capital projects fund, are at 71% of the annual budget and about 425%, I'm sorry, $425,000 or 7.1% higher than last year. That difference is primarily due to personnel expenditures, including police department vacancies in the prior year that were filled. And most importantly, all departments are within budget expectations. Thank you for the efforts of each of those department areas. And that concludes the finance report this evening. Thank you, Trustee Lautner. Okay, moving on to other reports, Village Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Thank you, Megan. Our village treasurer. Thank you, Mr. President. No report this evening. Thank you, Larry. Our village engineer. No report, Mr. President. Our village attorney. <coughs> Excuse me. I have no report, uh, Mr. President. And we'll move on to um, Commercial Revitalization Committee, Trustee Stewart. 
Thank you, Mr. Brother. Community marketing, a new available property properties map has been added to the interactive map gallery on the village's website. This map displays commercial properties within the village that are for sale or lease and includes square footage, zoning, and contact information for each. Please visit the village's website and click on village maps to view this new feature and the entire map property. Uh, map gallery, sorry. Commercial Revitalization Committee, our next meeting will take place on Thursday, March 10th at 6 p.m. in Village Hall. Businesses and members of the public are invited to attend and provide input on how the village can best support new and existing businesses and enhance the commercial areas of the Grange Park. Uh, I have one item that is uh, up for discussion and action. Village Market Streetscape Improvement Plan. Consultant selection. Uh, last year, the village requested a, uh, a release a request for proposals for consultant services to develop a streetscape improvement plan for the village market area. This plan will present a vision and recommendations for public improvements that establish a safer, more inviting environment along the Grange Road and throughout the, the village market. The village received six proposals. The Commercial Revitalization Committee interviewed four consultants firms on January 6th and met again on January 25th to discuss the proposals and results of the interviews. The committee recommended that the village board approve the selection of Sam Schwartz and their sub consultant site design group by a vote of two to one. Sam Schwartz is a national transportation, transportation planning and engineering firm that specializes in pedestrian and traffic safety along corridors similar to LaGrange Road. And the site design group is an award-winning landscape architecture and design firm with ex expertise in sustainable uh, uh, streetscapes and creative placemaking. Funding for this project is available through the Village uh, Market TIF District. Staff recommends that the Village Board authorize and direct the Village Manager to execute a contract with Sam Schwartz for consultant services to develop a streetscape improvement plan for the Village Market. Motion to authorize and, di and direct the village manager to execute a contract with Sam Schwartz for consultant services to develop a streetscape improvement plan for the village market in the amount of $70,710 plus an additional 10% contingency. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Trustee Stewart, do you want to start us off? <clears throat> sure. Uh, yeah, we, we talked in great detail about this last week. Uh, we had a little back and forth, you know, I think that several factors went into uh, the decision to go with Sam Schwartz. And uh, we know that pedestrian safety and, and, and traffic safety is, has, been a, has been a hot topic lately just with the addition of, of Andy's Rose and Custer. So we wanted to assure residents and, and everyone that all of these sort of things are taken into consideration. And Sam Schwartz has a very uh, extensive relationship with IDOT. They've uh, done engineering work with them for the past 20 years. So they bring a breadth of knowledge, uh, context and engagement techniques to this project. Um, and, you know, they also stood out because they, they addressed needs that were specific to LaGrange Park. So we thought that they would be a great source for us and uh, also looking into innovation and, and beautifying the, the village. We thought that it would be a great option to go with them. Uh, that was all I had. Thank you, Trustee Stewart. Trustee Council. Thank you, Mr. President. I have um, several things that I'd like to um, address tonight, uh, namely in reviewing their Sam Schwartz website in the packet that was presented for tonight's meeting. <clears throat> I know that they've worked on other local Chicago projects that demonstrate their capabilities um, although there are projects that appear to be well thought out and transformative, they are done on a much larger scale than the LaGrange Park streetscape plan. Also of importance to note is that the properties considered in the project are owned by private entities, namely the village market and homestead apartments, not the village. For that reason, there is not much the village can encourage private entities to change with regard to their properties even if it is supported by TIF funds. During my review of the PZC materials for the Andes Frozen Custard Project, Kim Lee Horn seems to be more intimately familiar with LaGrange Park, specifically its roads and traffic flows. Kimberly Horn was 
retained by Andes to prepare a traffic impact study. Along with the traffic study, they also prepared a detailed stormwater management report. The stormwater management not only meets LaGrange Park requirements, but the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District requirements as well. Within their detailed report, Kim Lee Horn also provided a post-development drainage area map, which illustrates the amount of runoff the village can expect once the site is fully developed. In the traffic study presented by Kim Lee Horn, they highlight specific details of LaGrange Road, Oak Avenue, and Woodlawn Avenue. In order to obtain this much detail about these roads, Kim Lee Horn would have had to physically observe the areas mentioned, whether by walking the site, driving through the site, and even viewing the site aerially. Given this, Kim Lee Horn provided supporting evidence that they are extremely familiar with LaGrange Road and IDOT controlled road. Kim Lee Horn acknowledges the volume of traffic on LaGrange Road and makes specific recommendations for ways of making the road more pedestrian friendly, as well as providing accessibility for bicyclists. For the reasons stated above, as well as the economics of the project, I would be in support of Kim Lee Horn obtaining the approval of providing a streetscape design, design plan for LaGrange Road as it traverses through LaGrange Park instead of Sam Schwartz. Albeit there is a $1,210 cost difference between Kim Lee Horn and Sam Schwartz, the former being the least expensive, I still view the economics to be important in making a decision. Kim Lee Horn also has in-house engineering contractors, which as Trustee Sheehan referred to as quote unquote, one-stop shopping in the minutes of the January 25th CRC meeting. This criterion can aid in the project moving forward smoothly. Another concern I have in choosing Sam Schwartz over Kim Lee Horn is although they identify 15 relevant projects, which is on page 15 of their report, only two were for quote unquote, complete streetscape design. Also in the staff prepared comments provided after the village board work session of February 8th, it was stated that safety of the residents crossing LaGrange Road is of utmost importance which is a definite concern we all have. The comments stated that Sam Schwartz brings expertise in multimodal transportation planning and implementation of road safety enhancements. The statement is accurate, but without examples of how they work with IDOT, I'm not inclined to support this. I was unable to find any other information on Sam Schwartz as it pertains to their relationship with IDOT and their projects. Also of note is that given the very small stretch of LaGrange Road and limited width of the road, IDOT might be less inclined to take our streetscape improvement plan as seriously due to other major projects they are involved in. Another concern that was raised during the February 8th work session was the lack of diversity and inclusion with Kim Lee Horn. While Sam Schwartz has their vibe, which is the valuing inclusion belonging and equity initiative. Upon review of the Kim Lee Horn website, I found much more notable information regarding their policies on diversity and inclusion. They are supportive of the LGBTQ plus population, women, Asian and Afro-American American people as well as receiving multiple awards and recognition for diversity in their workforce. This information not only supports their diversity and approach to equity, but their desire to continue this mission for years to come. While Sam Schwartz is a very capable company with all of the above, I still believe that Kim Lee Horn would be better suited for our local streetscape plan. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Trustee Council. Trustee Zora. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to comment on a few things because a lot was said at our previous meeting too. Uh, Kim Lee Horn probably does have a really good knowledge of the Grange Park because they were hired by Andes as a consultant and as their job, they should have surveyed the Grange Park in those areas. So it makes sense that they would call out other areas that maybe the three consultants that we interviewed did not because they didn't have time already invested in the Grange Park. Um, 
and this evening we're not voting on Kimley Horn or Sam Schwartz. We're voting on yes or no to Sam Schwartz. So if we decide to go forward with Sam Schwartz, then we move forward. If we don't, then it goes back to the committee again, and we may be back here in three weeks voting on the same firm. So I just want to bring that out here. We don't want to keep circling back. Um, I think it, it makes things look a little dysfunctional. And when there's a firm that has several entities under them, I think that is also beneficial. But sometimes it's nicer to have a firm that has some of the consultants separate because then there's a checks and balances because those consultants are hired by that firm and they want to get rehired by that firm. So sometimes they will perform even better than if the firm was all under the same umbrella, if that makes sense. Um, and as trustee Stewart stated, Sam Schwartz is known for their pedestrian safety and traffic safety, which I think is key in LaGrange Road. And the committee did not select this area for this proposal. The village staff did, and they had intentions to do that, and they think that this is a good site. So it wasn't the committee that made this selection to look at Village Market. Uh, I have faith in Sam Schwartz that they will do a great job. Their interview demonstrated that they're very innovative by providing examples of road diet in, village, in the village on Sherwood and Homestead. And again, they haven't worked in this village, so I feel like the fact that they pulled these things out when they're just trying to get hired and they haven't already been hired and working in the village for several months shows their interest in us. And one of the presenters of Sam Schwartz went a step further than anyone else in providing examples of surveys that they would issue in this village that were customized to the Grange Park. And no one else did that. And although maybe Sam Schwartz's information about their relationship with IDOT is not plastered on their website, that does not mean that they don't have a good relationship. And they told us that they do, and all their recommendations were positive. So I am still very much in favor of Sam Schwartz, and I think they will do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Zora. Trustee Seidel? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I no doubt believe that either form Kimley Horn or Sam, Sam Schwartz will do a good job. Um, I looked at both of their websites and they both have information on traffic safety as well as inclusion. Both of them, I believe, would do a great job. They both seem to be very capable firms. Um, I appreciate staff for sending all the additional information they did to us. Um, however, um, I am going to go with the recommendation of the committee. They put a lot of time interviewing the firms, discussing them. So with that, although I think they are both great, I am going to support the recommendation of the committee and um, support this. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Seidel. Uh, Trustee Sheehan? Thank you, Mr. President. We all spent a lot of time on this and um, the, the meetings and the almost four hours that we spent uh, that night with the interview. And at that night, you know, Kimley Horn, majority, um, looking at the ranking sheet sent out, was ranked number one. Um, I think, I'm, you know, their presentation, I, you know, and again, I'm sure both firms, either or, will do a good job. Um, but I don't know how we could get from pretty sure on number one, an excellent interview, uh, their presentation, their reference, and their cost. Yeah, okay, the quote unquote one stop shop. Um, but I, I just can't, I just can't and won't support um, this motion. So. Thank you, Trustee. Yeah, Mr. President, like I said, from that from that meeting night, uh, you know, I I don't have a good explanation nor a good feeling on what transpired and how they got moved down. And um, again, we do this; we don't get paid. It's a lot of time, and it's frustrating. And yeah, everybody's upset, and everybody has their own opinion. But for the for the reasons I've stated in other meetings, I'm not going to support this. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Sheehan. Trustee Lardner? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, 
Well, I appreciate the uh, the perspective uh, of, of each of the discussions prior to me and the pre previous meetings that we've had. And I, and I highly regard the, um, the, the efforts um, and perspectives of the people that look at this most closely and, and the, the opinions have come forth. But uh, I, I come back to, and I've, I've heard this several times this evening already, that there's, there's a perspective that both firms are very highly qualified, both will do a, a good job. And, and I come back to um, the efforts of the committee, of, you know, unless we all want to be on the, uh, in, you know, no, no negative comment about anyone that's involved in the, in the committee. I'm just saying, unless we all want to be on every committee, I, I you know, I, I, I come back to, I'll say, trusting the efforts while appreciating the different perspectives of the effort of the committee to come forward. But, um, you know, I, I, I feel that following the recommendation of the, of the committee, is the right, right uh, way to proceed uh, with appreciation for the efforts that it took to get through to that point and the additional information I think Trustee Seidel had made reference to. I found the additional effort and the additional information that staff came forward with, which I think was certainly appropriate. It was extra work, there's no question, but uh, when you get different perspectives, of, you know, it's, a, it's an important decision, of course, for the village. So um, I appreciate it. That was very helpful. And, and with that, I, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable supporting the, the recommendation of the committee and, and look forward to moving forward and see how things turn out. I'm, I'm sure they will be um, an excellent project. Thank you, Trustee Lawner. Yeah, so I just, I would just like to make a couple comments. I'd like to thank uh, Maggie and Julia for all the hard work you guys did to provide the information. And definitely the, the committee of uh, Trustee Stewart, Trustee Zor, and Trustee Sheehan, who went through and did the interviews and and uh, came up with a recommendation, um, albeit two to one. However, um, you know, I, I was at that first meeting with all the interviewers, and, and uh, I totally misread some of the interviewees, especially this one with Sam Schwartz. And after listening to comments from some of the committee members, um, it changed my vote right away. And, you know, Maybe when we get more information, people are allowed to change how they feel. And, and I know it was two to one, um, but good justification for, for, for what this committee has come forward to. And I want to thank Trustee Stewart and Zora and Sheehan for all the hard work you did. Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? No. Trustee Sheehan? No. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes by a vote of four to two, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. And again, thank you, Trustee Stewart, for chairing that committee and doing such a great job. Thank you. Okay, motion to approve committee and collectors reports as presented. So a second. So moved. Second. Uh, Megan, Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. Okay, I just have a couple items that I'd like to say. Um, you know, we're blessed as a board and as a, as a community to have staff that go above and beyond and, and go outside of our community to get um, experience and to get education and to bring those those ideas and refresh uh, ideas back to our community. Um, and I'm specifically speaking about Julia, who is on a couple committees with IML, and recently to Maggie, who was appointed to uh, IRMA's Coverage Claims and Litigation Committee. I think that's phenomenal. Maggie, thank you for putting yourself out there and bringing that information back to us so we can all benefit. Um, Julie, I don't know if I've talked to you. I know that Trustee Sheen and Trustee Lawton have brought this up before with, um, um, I forget who it was, but Trustee Rocco, have we made any any move yet on, on her brick? I know the weather's not permitting that yet, but we wanna keep that fresh so that maybe when weather breaks, we can do that ceremony too. Um, so this, this is it, hopefully. This is our last remote meeting. And I wanna thank Julia and staff, Maggie, 
for putting this all together, for helping us through this very difficult time and making the transition so easy uh, to do it remotely. But however, I will look forward to everybody being in person again at our next meeting. Um, next on the agenda, public participation of non-agenda -re related items. Would anyone on the call care to address the board? Is there a call that would like to address the board? The only one here, Sophie. I think there may be caller number six. Caller six, did you have a comment? Oh, okay. six. All right, I guess not. Any new business from the board? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. A second. Megan, call the roll. Trustee Lautner? Yes. Trustee Zora? Yes. Trustee Seidel? Yes. Trustee Council? Yes. Trustee Sheehan? Yes. Trustee Stewart? Yes. The motion passes unanimously, Mr. President. Thank you, Megan. I want to thank staff and, and board for all that you do to make our community great. Uh, have a great week and our meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.